Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now share with you things that happened today in history, the 28th of April. I'm starting with a really sad story uh, that took place in 2012, somewhere um, on the expressway in, uh, in Edo State. It was on this day that an auto crash um, happened. Uh, the, uh, of course, um, Nigerian Union of Journalists uh, were uh, thrown into mourning on this day. It was uh, the shocking death of three journalists who were involved in a ghastly motor accident involving the convoy of uh, Governor Adam Sushomole along the Warake uh, Auchi Road, Isako West Local Government area of the state. The accident occurred sometime around 12.45 p.m. when the convoy was coming from an Action Congress of Nigeria uh, meeting. Um, at that time, of course, Governor Shomale drove himself and escaped death by the whiskers when a Tipa lorry was said to have rammed into his convoy. Uh, the governor was at the hospital with the, with the victims, which also included his security details, as, of course, he uh, tried to press on the doctors to do what was necessary to save their lives. Uh, eventually, of course, the three of those persons, uh, journalists who were a part of that convoy, and members of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, um, all passed on on that day. Um, and so it was a really, really sad incident. Uh, a lot of them were taken to Benin Central Hospital at the end of the, uh, the, of the day when... Um, um, of course, uh, the case became critical. And it was on this day, once again, uh, there's not too much in the story to share, that uh, those three journalists uh, died in that car accident. So, so really sad. sad. Yes, really, really sad. Really sad. Um, I remember also, um, ooh, can't remember his name now, uh, that also uh, passed in a car accident. I think it was, uh, it was um, oh, I don't, don't want to make any mistakes, but similar story. Yeah. But on this day in history as well, April 28th, back in the year, uh, we're talking about 2018, um, the government of India announced that electricity has reached every village in India. So the, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that uh, this was achieved when a remote village in the northeastern state of Manipur became the last to be connected to the grid and nearly 600,000 villages in India had been given electricity connection. Uh, we know that India is the largest, the third largest uh, consumer of power, and also the third largest producer of power. You know, but uh, even though there were lots of political opposition to that, you know, opposition parties, you know, called this achievement a ruse, that, you know, this was ahead of the elections in the country, you know, but, uh, like I mentioned, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted that it will be remembered as a historic day in the development of India. And uh, he had promised, uh, you know, some years back in his independence speech in 2015 that every Indian village would be electrified in the next 1,000 days. But we know that, you know, uh, media reports, investigations after that showed that uh, this great stride of village electrification in India still leaves 90% of people in India. Uh, you know, without electricity, yet they had been connected to the grid, but the power distribution mm. was an issue, right? I, yeah. I, I think we still have places, you know, in Nigeria not connected to the grid, yeah. you know, but they all have been connected to the grid, but the issue remains, you know, getting the power distributed, you know, down to their homes, their businesses, and where they actually need it most. But, uh, they, you know, they, they're one step ahead. I think EKEDC needs to move... Uh um, offices to India and see what they can do to assist. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> what they can do to see, assist? Or see you how mean, they can, you know. Or you mean uh, learn? I, I, <laughs> I mean, so it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, that every community in India now has been connected to the grid. The next stage, obviously, would be to power, you know, all these communities. Yes. Um, I, I, need, I don't know how much um, electricity India currently generates, um, but... Um, you know, we always share these stories and bring it back home, you know, and of course, uh, talk about our own situation. We're still hovering around 4,000 megawatts uh, for a country of 200 million people. There's places that are not connected to the grid. There's places who have been connected to the grid but have not had power in three years. I remember when I was on radio then, people used to call the EEDC and say, um, you know, our community in Abakaliki or our community in Bainway or, you know, um, uh, here and there have not had power in two years or had power in three years. Everybody uses um, generators. Yeah, you know, and that's life that yeah, you, they've been used to for the last couple of years. So um, let's, let's, you know, as much as, you know, we would celebrate the fact that India has taken that step, um, it is also a good thing, you know, that and their population is entirely insane. So... 
Um, I know it must be also difficult to ensure that every single person in India has electricity. But it's also the same thing that we will do here in Nigeria and make sure that everybody's connected to the grid and everybody gets their prepaid meters and everybody gets, you know, constant electricity. The um, electricity situation in Nigeria is too poor, you know, to even shame India. I don't really know how true this is, but this is what I heard you know, in my neighborhood, you know, about how you know the government was, you know, distributing free prepaid meters, and because of that, the the you know EKDC people were very angry and they stopped giving people lights. <laughs> I don't know how yeah. that true is, but that's what I heard. Well, we, well, we have our we have our peculiar. But you power should be happy that from, I mean that's your job to provide it. Yeah. So <laughs> from generation to transmission to distribution. Um, and of course, a bill payment also. Nigerians also. But do you know how much people paid for those prepaid meters? Yeah. Well, you know, I, some I, people paid as much as hundred k. Yeah. Well, what well, well, I'm what I'm trying to point out, you know, there's there's always a you know some way or the other where you know there's corruption in the system where it's you know it's flawed, you know. But I'm I'm saying that Nigerians themselves have have their own issues, you know, with payment with paying bills. There's people who steal electricity. There's people who tap electricity and you know um, um, bypass their meters. There's so much. You know, My neighbors discovered fixed. that his neighbor had been stealing his power for like 18 months. Yeah, those things happen. It's like happened. you're paying, you're paying um, power bills for two families. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. We are going to go on a short break. When we come back, we're moving into our first major conversation for today. The Chandler um, Government Index Ranking of Nigeria. Like I said earlier, we're only better than Zimbabwe and Venezuela. And Nigeria ranks 102 out of 104. And, of course, the third worst country to live in. And the worst governed country, by the way, um, in the world. So we'll talk about that next when we come back from this break. Stay with us.